Hi, I'm Billy, and this is Knox Machining. Welcome to the shop. Hey everyone, welcome back. Well today I want to show you something I've been working on over the past few weeks. If you read the description, you already know that it's a counterbalance tapping arm. And like a manual tapping fixture, the arm allows you to keep your tap square to your work, helping prevent broken taps and ensuring a good straight tapped hole. And because you can power tap, it's quick and the arm allows for easy positioning on your work. So let's take a look and see it in action. All right, for this demo, we're going to be tapping this half inch aluminum bar. We're going to be tapping it with this uh, quarter 20 spiral flute tap from YG. I picked it up off of Amazon. The holes have been drilled with a number seven drill bit and we're going to be using a lima tap. All right, so let's get going. Uh, the drill is set on 14 on the clutch, high speed. Let's see how it does. All right, that made short work of it. Looks like I tapped one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes in that period of time. I keep going. I've only tested this up to a quarter inch. I will do some testing with some three eighths here pretty soon. Okay, everyone, so to build the tapping arm, I took this uh, monitor arm that I picked up off of Amazon, uh, link to it in the description below. Um, it's a Vivo brand. Uh, you can use whatever brand you want. Uh, just make sure that when you get it, it has the uh, adjustment for the gas strut right here. So um, this one here has a, a screw right here that you can adjust to adjust the tension on the, uh, or the, the weight on the counterbalance here. Um, I did have to make some modifications to this. The joints are way too stiff for the tapping action. So I'm gonna disassemble this and show you all what I did to uh, make that nice and smooth. Okay, so we're going to take this thing apart. First thing, I'm going to take this mount off. We don't need that, so I'll get rid of it over there. And I'm going to pull this off. Get it loosened up. And then, oh, that's pretty stiff. Okay. And some parts we might want to use later on. All right. And next we're going to take the base off. Okay. Got a little spacer ring. And a Dillon bushing. And now let's take this apart. has some extra parts, a little cap, and I do believe it has a bushing also. There we go. All right, so some of these parts we're going to reuse and some of them we're going to replace. Um, let me get uh, the rest of the parts out and I'll bring you all right back. Okay, everyone, we got this apart, so let's take a look and see what we need to do. Uh, first thing up is um, we have these thrust bearings. Um, I think I wanna put these in uh, to make it nice and smooth, but to do that, we're gonna have to make some modifications. Uh, the first thing is we're gonna have to mill off this boss. 
Uh, we have this bearing here. This one is, I believe it's 35 millimeter by 20. Now 35 millimeter OD by uh, 20 millimeter ID. Um, and to use that, they have a bushing here, but it's too, uh, too small to work with the uh, thrust bearing. So we're not gonna use that. We're gonna turn on one of those. And that's gonna necessitate uh, boring this piece out as well. So uh, we'll do that as well. Um, and then we have another thrust bearing. This one's to go on the underside here uh, so that when you uh, bolt this back together, you've got thrust bearing on either side of the bolt. Uh, this one here is a 28 millimeter by uh, 15. All right, for this part, uh, like the other one, we're gonna mill this uh, boss off right there. Um, the bushing that came with this is the proper size, so we don't need to do anything with that. Once again, this is a 35 by uh, 20 millimeter uh, thrust bearing. And then we got a smaller one here for the underside, and it is um, 20 by eight millimeter. Uh, we don't need that part. We don't need the spacer. Um, we'll reuse these parts later on, I believe. And uh, that's it. Um, I'll put a link to these bearings um, in the description below. I picked them up off of Amazon for a reasonable price. Uh, so let's go and uh, mill and do some turning. So this is a setup I've done to fixture this uh, monitor arm uh, so that I can mill the boss off. Um, I've got it mounted in a uh, uh, toolmaker's vise down here. It's got a stud in there that's uh, clamped in a V-block. And then I've got a 246 block here clamped uh, with a clamp to it uh, via this little fixture I made up. Uh, so uh, it seems pretty rigid, rigid enough for what I'm going to be doing. Uh, let's go ahead and get going. Pause there and see what happened. Not exactly sure what happened there. I'll have to review the video and see. Not quite cleaned up. You need just a hair more. Okay, let's take a look at that now and see. That's looking pretty good. All right, let me uh, cut out here for a few minutes and uh, do some test fitting and I'll bring you all right back. Okay, we're back. So here is another setup. Uh, this one also needs to have the boss milled off of it. Uh, let's just go ahead and get that done. Um, I've protected it, you know, this black finish, I've protected it with some cardboard there. Um, Again, it seems pretty stable. We'll see how it does.
raise it up just a hair more. Nothing about this is precision. Uh, this is just so that I can add some thrust bearings to this. And I couldn't add the thrust bearings with that boss on there. They just wouldn't go, go over it. I think that's got it. I'll deburring and that'll work. test fit and see if it fits in there. Not quite. All right. Okay, the uh, telescoping gauge reads, reads 5.74, and I've got 5.76 on my dial, so we're going to tooth out. And we want to go up to, what was that measurement again? 581. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just dial 581 each straight in. Now we're going to part it off. I'll clean that up and I'll bring you all right back. All right, guys. So here we have the base of the uh, flex arm 
that I am working on. I now need to bore this out to 20 millimeters and I've got a coaxial indicator hooked up here and I need to uh, center up on the bore. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And it's out a bit. I'm gonna start dialing it in and what I'm looking for is I'm just looking for that needle to stop moving so much. As I get it pretty close in, you can see it's already swinging less. Dialing it in. And I'm operating on the Y right now. I'll do the X axis here in a minute. Okay, pretty good. All right, now let's bring in the X. barely moving and what you're seeing there is probably the surface texture of that uh, bore. Uh, I'm going to call that good enough. Um, let me get this set up for the boring operation and I'll bring you all right back. Okay we are now back. I've got this set up with a boring bar. I need to bore this uh, out to about 20 millimeter. Let's go ahead and get going. That didn't work out too good. All right, let me fix this set up and I'll bring you all right back. Okay, so Bozo came and visited the shop there. Um, the base pulled up while I was doing that initial boring act operation. So I went and um, used the clamps here to reclamp it down. Now they're not in the best of locations. You typically want your studs to be closer to your thing that you're clamping but due to the setup here um, I had to use it on the far back so I've got it cranked down pretty tight just needed you know, enough clamping action on there to keep it from lifting the other thing is I'm going to decrease the feed rate from three uh, thou to one and a half and for the first couple passes I'm going to go in a, in a slower rpm so let's uh, start this back up and see how we do Looks like that's doing better, less chatter. Oh, that's a much nicer finish. Perfect, absolutely perfect. All right guys, I'll bring you back. Okay, so we're back from machining and turning the parts. Uh, on this piece, uh, like I said before, um, I milled the boss off and I uh, bored it out uh, to fit this uh, Delrin bushing that I turned. And this is Delrin bushing is a good fit uh, for these thrust washers. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put some molly lube on these and assemble it. Before I do that, I do wanna point out that this piece here has a uh, stop in it that you probably want to take out. I used a uh, die grinder or you can use a, a Dremel so that uh, when the bushing goes in 
it, uh, it can go all the way up in there. All right, so let's go ahead and get this assembled. Get some molly lube. I try not to get this on me, but this stuff is pretty, pretty nasty, so it's probably gonna get everywhere. That's way too much. All right, that's good. All right, we'll just make a little sandwich here. I'm not gonna put it on the other side because it'll, it'll get on the other side when it, after it starts turning. Just uh, stick it in there like that. All right, turn it over, put that on there. All right, we'll put some molly lube on this one here. Good. Make ourselves another little sandwich. And drop it down in there. Over the boss. Now, this little piece here was in the original assembly. Uh, I'm not using it for this one. It doesn't need it now. So I'm just gonna toss that aside. And we're gonna put this little, uh, this washer is a, kind of like a Belleville washer. It's got uh, some spring in it. I'm putting it so that uh, it's going to put those um, thrust bearings under tension. There we go. And we're going to tighten it up. And my hands are greasy. Nice amount of torque. And that still spins nice and freely. All right, next we're gonna do the upper section. All right. Okay, now we're gonna assemble the upper arm. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and uh, prep our thrust bearings again. Uh, like before, we're gonna take some molly lube and we're gonna, just gonna put a little bit on it. Try not to get it on ourselves, but that's inevitable. and just make our cookie, like so. Um, this is the original uh, bushing that came with it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it through the thrust bearing and instead of going up from underneath, we're gonna come in on top and push it down through here. And that's gonna keep your thrust bearings all nice contained. And the upper arm assembly has a recess in it and that's not gonna, uh, you know, that's gonna allow clearance for that bushing. So there's not gonna be any interference with those two. So we'll just put them together. And then I'm gonna take and uh, prep the smaller bearing with some more molly. And it's so tiny, it doesn't take a lot. There we go, that's enough. Top thrust and bottom thrust washer. All right, uh, I am reusing the uh, washer that came with it, uh, this keyed washer. It will not key on the, on the uh, stud now, but that's okay, we don't need it to. So I'm gonna bring this around and compress this down. This is kind of awkward to try to do. I'm just one person. Let's see, there we go. Drop those down in there. I'm gonna drop the washer. And then I'm using the black washer. This again is like a Belleville washer, Belleville washer. I'll drop him in place and get all that lined up. And then we're gonna screw the assembly together. Starting to get tight. Now you don't want to tighten this one up too tight. It doesn't need to be super tight. You know, give it a nice good torque and back off about a little bit, about a, I don't know, about an eighth of a turn. 
and that should be relatively smooth. Uh, you'll want to work it around a little bit and get that uh, molly lube in there nice and nice and clean all over the bearings. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach the uh, the drill to the arm. So we'll do that next. Okay, so now we're going to attach the drill to the um, tapping arm. First off, I want to say that this is a Ryobi drill that I've had for a while, and it's a hammer drill. And I picked it because um, the attachment point, you know, hammer drill normally has the handle, but we're going to use that as the attachment point uh, to the arm. So we're going to take this uh, metric bolt, and it's going to go in on this side. All right. Uh, we're going to take this aluminum spacer. I didn't film you know, I didn't video any of these parts because it's custom for the drill, but that's okay. Uh, if you, you may or may not use this, uh, the same drill that I'm using. Uh, put that on there. Um, this little uh, steel spacer uh, with some taper to transition down to the aluminum. Okay, and then we're going to insert this little bushing. All right, let me get that set there. Now we need to position this in such a way that the drill will be center line with the um, is that correct yes that is all right there we go get that all turned around there and then uh, like I said previously we're going to take these uh, Belleville washers and reuse those and we'll put them on there and we're going to put the other washer and the nut and then we're going to cinch all this up. Okay. All right. And now we get it all positioned properly, like so. And tighten it up a little bit more. Now, when you get this set up on your bench, you'll you'll align the you'll set the drill up so that it's parallel to your your work surfaces and stuff. So there'll be some adjustment uh, that you'll be doing in addition to this. Uh, the last step is is we need to tighten this little um, joint up, uh, but we'll do that on the bench. Uh, I do want to uh, talk about how you attach the tap to the drill, and I'll bring you right back for that. All right, so we're going to talk about attaching your tap to your drill. Uh, I picked up these uh, tap attachments, um, they're called GRIP, uh, they're from Irwin I believe, I'll link to a description below. Um, they come in two different sizes, this is for a quarter inch to half inch, and this one is for uh, number six up to a quarter. Uh, and you normally would use uh, one of these things, this is a, um, a hex to a three eighths inch adapter. But I didn't like using it because it added way too much length. So I decided to make my own. I took a piece of three eight, of um, half inch round stock, uh, I believe it was cold rolled, and I put it in a 5C collet and collet block, and I milled the four flats, and then I uh, switched it out for the hex collet and milled the six sides for it. Um, then I drilled and then set these little detents that I picked up off of Amazon. I'll put a link to those in the description below also. Um, and made this little adapter. So let's take a look and see how that went. All right, so uh, we're making this stub adapter for adapting the drill to the uh, 3 8 inch uh, driver. I'm first going to mill the uh, four sides for the uh, 3 8 inch driver.
Okay, that's three, eight, nine. I'm gonna go with that for now. If we need to trim it a little more, we will. I want this to be a nice tight fit. Okay, so just a bit tight. All right, let's check for fit. Hey, there we go. And that's the fit I was looking for. All right. I'm gonna go clean that up and I'll bring y'all right back. depth stops not working for this particular collar block so I'll just have to make do with doing using a one two three block. I think that's done. Let's pull it out of there and take a look. Yep, I got six sides on there. All right, I'm gonna check that up in the lathe and knock off a little bit of the burrs and I'll bring y'all right back. Okay, and lastly, I wanna talk about the taps. I've picked up these taps off of Amazon from a company called YG. Uh, they're spiral flute taps. Uh, they work really well. Um, I've tested the tapping arm up to 3 8 of an inch, uh, 3 8 16, uh, but primarily testing with was this uh, quarter 20. 
Uh, these are really good taps. They seem to be decent quality. And so far I haven't broke one. Um, I'll link to these down in the description below also. Well, that's gonna wrap this up. Uh, please don't forget to click the like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And thanks for watching.